No, I wouldn't support a Fine Gael government. Um, I don't really see much difference between what Fine Gael have to offer and what Fine Fáil have had to offer for the last 10 years. Um, no, out of the question. I am completely in favour of, well, to say, give more power back to local government. In my opinion, local government doesn't really function anymore in Ireland because it's, it's, it isn't structured right and it's underfunded. And creating real local government uh, on the European model is an absolute necessity for every region in the country uh, to improve how things are managed. There has been serious mismanagement and a complete lack of it in some cases. Uh, in the state and reforming and creating a real local government is absolutely essential. I'm very much in favour of uh, decentralising power. In the last 30 years more and more power has moved to Dublin to the central government and there's been less and less of a connect with the people and their problems. Uh, it's obvious that we need to move back and reintroduce democracy at a local level where the citizen actually plays an active role in the decision making process and the people that they elect to local councils need to be accountable to the people. So the people they elect should be put in positions of authority and responsibility in the new local government and they'll be responsible to the citizens who put them there and if they don't behave in a proper manner then the citizens can replace them. Yes, I would. Um, I think it's, it's only fair that this country started to mature and uh, that's obvious. I mean, it's really a freedom of rights for everyone and uh, there's no logic to uh, blocking something like that. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strange one on their part. Um, I'd, I don't see the logic behind such an initiative. I, uh, the notion that we should have our own language which is part of our identity, uh, is surely a given in any state, and I think Irish needs to be encouraged. Well, <laughs> I don't own a suit or a tie, but I'll wear pink. Not every day, of course. <laughs> um. Well, I mean, it's a huge problem, and... Uh, I've said from the start in my campaign, I'm not making any promises, and I'm not fixing, promising to fix anyone's potholes. Anyway, it, would, it's not, it isn't the role of the TD to fix potholes, but of course, it is a role for local government if it was functioning in a proper manner. And a lot of the potholes are not going to be fixed for a while because local councils are very much underfunded, and there's a the majority of them are actually in debt at the moment because the state has cut back on their funding. Uh, they're actually borrowing money to try and run their organisations. And uh, if anyone thinks all the potholes are going to be fixed uh, dramatically uh, after the election, then that isn't going to happen. Um, a lot of the potholes wouldn't have appeared in the first place if the quality of workmanship had been better. Because if you drive around this county today, there isn't potholes everywhere. There's an awful lot of potholes. But have you noticed that some parts of the roads are actually good because they were done properly? So there has to be far more quality control when they eventually find the money to start repairing the roads. Well, to be honest, I'm, I'm not familiar with the legislation. Um, I do think that people... Uh, First of all, I think that it's more important that we look after our people first. Uh, our, we have people who are being treated very, very poorly. And some people treat their animals better than the state has treated our people. And, but as a rule, you, 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 you know that healthy people uh, treat animals well anyway. Yeah, it's, a, it's an archaic law. And uh, as you know, I think in Britain it's three years, I think it's one year in America. Um, I mean, it's, it's, um, it's very draconian, 12 years. Now, uh, some of my <laughs> opponents have been t telling uh, people on the doorstep that I'm bankrupt, but um, I can assure you that I would not have been allowed to register as a candidate if I didn't have a tax clearance out. Well, I would definitely be campaigning for a reduction uh, 
in the money that, that the politicians are taking home. But the, the main abuse is in the area of expenses. And plus, there's actually, uh, um, I've only discovered that independents actually get over 40,000 a year on top of their salary and pensions uh, just for being an independent. So in five years, you can get over 200,000 just uh, for being an independent. I think that should be scrapped. It's madness. I, uh, in this day and age, when so many people are suffering uh, at so many levels right through our society, the notion that you can get 200,000 for five years on top of everything else uh, is away with the fairies. Well, there's little doubt that the EU has grown into a monster and uh, more and more since we joined it, uh, power has become more centralized in the hands of Germany and France. And we, 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 we're not called a periphery nation for nothing. We are very much on the periphery. Um, I would like to be part of Europe, but on different terms. And I'm afraid the euro that we've known it, the, Euros, the European system as we've known it, is unlikely to stay the course. The euro project itself is under threat. And I do think the notion that we can play in the same league as Germany and France in the years ahead is a very uh, ambitious one. And I do see a two-tier Europe developing, um, just the same as the Wexford youths couldn't play in the same league as Bayern Munich. There's little doubt that political donations separate the, the electorate from the legislative, because big, when big finance comes in, if you give money to a politician to run, like for example, <clears throat> in, the, in America, the arms industry gives millions and millions to the different candidates. Well, when that person gets elected, he has to give it back indirectly. He has to make sure that the, the people who gave him the money are looked after. And that's the way it works. And we are not going to have a clean system while that system prevails. And of course, it should be tackled. Well, to be dead honest, uh, I, can't, I can't promise I'm going to achieve anything in my first 100 days. I've said I'm standing as an independent, making no promises to anybody. I hope to get into the doll and form a grouping of seven with six other like-minded independents and try to affect change from a position of opposition. Uh, change is not going to happen from the government side. It doesn't happen. Turkeys don't vote for Christmas. It can only happen from opposition. And if I get in, I can't even guarantee I can affect change, but I, all I'll do is I, I will certainly try, and I'll be honest in my approach. Well, I would say to people that if they think that I would sell my soul to the establishment or join any of the large parties, don't vote for me. Because, and I'll tell you, if you do vote for me, and I do that, you just can throw me in the ocean. Well, first of all, your average TD in Ireland, for, for, for as long as I can remember, has been spending about 95% of his time doing things that he shouldn't be doing. If I'm elected to a national parliament, I'm going to function in a national parliament. And I should link with the local government of the area that elected me, but I should not be interfering in issues that are not of my concern. A, 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 an elected national representative in the Dáil should not be deciding what, holds, what potholes are fixed, what roads are tarred, uh, who, where, where somebody should be on the queue for a hospital bed. And it's one of the things, this parish pump politics is killing Ireland. It's killing it socially, it's killing it economically. And we have to move away from that. And if people want someone to pretend, if they want a TD that's going to pretend that he's going to fix all these bits and pieces and fix the lights here and there and continue just engaging in local issues, then you should, if that's what you want, don't vote for me because I am looking to get into a national parliament to function at a national level. Our Wexford's problems are Ireland's problems. Wexford's problems are not going to be fixed by looking after little small issues that uh, should be dealt with by local government. Wexford's problems will be dealt with when Ireland itself 
is put back into a, in a healthy state. Of course, I have other concerns. I mean, uh, but I mean, there's, everyone does different things with their time. If my construction business stays going, and even if it didn't, uh, I, I would probably restart it. I run wine bars, I run a football club, uh, I'm, I raise two families, and uh, I think I, I have always managed to do uh, more than most in terms of, of how I deal, how I measure out my time. I don't have time to watch television. I still read a lot as well. Um, I have no doubt that I can be effective in a full role as a TD in the doll and still look after the other issues in my life. I'm not actually out pouring concrete and paving in the construction sector. I have uh, the capacity to delegate. I have some wonderful people working for me. And uh, I mean, my business is functioning well at the moment. And I'm out 15 hours a day campaigning to see if I can get elected. Um, Listen, it's all about how you use your time. And I guarantee you that if I get into the doll, I will fill the role in a proper manner.